All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined all the way from Switzerland by Rick uh, Ivanovich. How are you doing, Rick? I'm doing very well, John. Uh, thanks, And thanks for having me on your show. Come now, on. before we start... <laughs> humor me and I'd like to share a core belief that I hold pretty dear all of us every single one of us we have the potential to be architects of change in today's era which is really defined by constant transformation constant change our task isn't just to keep up and survive but to actively shape the path forward from stacking shelves and learning the ropes of people management as a trainee in a UK supermarket to later immersing myself in the rather more precise world of accounting mm -hmm. and later navigating this constantly evolving landscape of technology and humans, my own story demonstrates the power of transformation and continuous learning and the significant impact each and every one of us can make. Every day our actions, whether they're big or small, they do shape our future. And as we discuss stuff today, John, I want everybody listening to remember this. You are your brand. And every single decision that you make is part of the unique story that you are crafting for yourself. How you react, how you adapt, and how you innovate in the face of all this change will define your story and your legacy. This belief inspiring each of us for some kind of balanced fulfillment is the cornerstone of my work. It's actually my life purpose. So as we dive into our conversation today, let's not just think about adapting to change, yeah, yeah. but about how we can define it. Yeah. After all, when we embrace our unique qualities and strive for that personal growth, we're not just participants, mm -hmm. but catalysts in our ever-changing business as unusual world. So let's get started, John. Yeah, absolutely, Rick. And, you know, Rick has worked across many countries and many industries. You know, he's an extraordinary visionary leader who combines business acumen with coaching and mentoring skills. And here's one of the things I wanted to ask you, Rick, right, is, as we say, uh, change is inevitable. It's constant. It's transformation. We're going through massive transformation, digital transformation. Now AI has, you know, really, you know, uprooted everything. And yet... A lot of a lot of us as people, you know, still try to, you know, to, we still try to control circumstances. We actually don't like change, even though it's it's a constant. But we try and control things that we can't control, or we try and keep maintain the status quo because it feels a little more comfortable, even though it really isn't. So, what is from a psychological point of view, what is it that, that drives us in those ways that we always seem to be at odds with really what's going on? Well. If we are forced, pushed, <laughs> threatened or whatever, <laughs> to have to step out of our comfort zone, it doesn't feel safe. So right. that's really, I mean, psychologically, that's our own animal uh, uh, brain, <clears throat> you know, our ancient brain basically telling us there's a threat out there. Mm -hmm. You know, now in older, you know, thousands of years ago, it might be a saber-toothed tiger or something, but we don't have any of them today. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's our ancient mind telling us that there's a threat, whereas if we can engage our more rational thinking brain, we realize, well, there isn't really a threat there. So that, that's one thing. So, so the thing is, is that <clears throat> change is, is potentially going to move us out of our comfort zone. And we don't like doing that. Right. However, given that we are surrounded by change, and if we talk about technology, and mm -hmm. you mentioned generative AI, it is happening <laughs> like by the, right. by the second, literally. It is advancing so quickly. And to survive all this, we just need to embrace the change. Mm -hmm. We need to get, to get used to it. So mm -hmm. we need to get used to feeling uncomfortable. We need to get used to being out of our comfort zone. I mean, from a coaching or learning perspective, growth happens outside our comfort zone. So mm -hmm. to be honest, if we feel 
too comfortable, we're probably not growing. We're probably right. not learning. And that, that's probably a, a worse thing because given that the pace of change, if, if we fail to learn and move forward and we just stand where we are, mm-hmm. well, the rest of the world is learning and moving forward. We're <laughs> effectively being left behind. Yeah. So this is why I say we, we need to be an architect of change. Are, are we just going to react when something mm. happens or are mm. we going to try and anticipate things and take action now and move forward? Yeah. And because, you could, if, for instance, like if we go to, to Gen AI as, as, a, as a subject, mm. right, uh, as a topic, you can look at that. There's many ways you can look at it uh, and, and you can look at it and say, OK, this is a threat. Uh, or you can look at it and say, here's an opportunity for me to look at how does this apply to me? How can it apply to me? How can it apply to my business? How can I, when there's something as dramatic as this changing the world, how can I become part of this change? How can I be an asset you know, in my organization? Or maybe how can I enhance my career prospects going forward by instead of war- instead of being afraid, being open and embracing. Absolutely. Totally agree. I mean, um, we're either going to be a passenger Mm -hmm. (laughs) and either be pulled along or carried along Mm -hmm. or left behind, um, or we put ourselves in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you can look at it as a huge opportunity. Hey, is the glass half empty Mm -hmm. or is the glass half full? Mm -hmm. Or the way that I look at it, the glass is always full. Right, uh, because it doesn't matter how much water is in there. Um, there's a thing called air. Um, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, the the fact is, as you said, do you want to be in the driver's seat? Do you want to be the the one person in your team or organization or group of people that says, "Okay, I'm going to embrace this. I'm going to mm-hmm. work out all of this Gen AI stuff, and I'll start telling people what we can use it for. I can yeah. help. I can help people. I can teach people. And yeah. and before you know it." You know, if you're one of those early movers, uh, and and there are several people out there, you can establish yourself as the expert, you know, or more expert relative to the people around you. Right. And and when you work with organisations, how do you help organisations embrace this idea of change and being architects of change and moving forward? Because sometimes it's stifled. Because maybe even our example there, maybe in the organization, somebody says, no, no, hey, Rick, no, don't don't bother with that stuff. I need you to focus on on what your your core responsibilities are. I don't need you looking at that AI stuff right now. Uh, you know, how do you help organizations be more open? Because the change is coming and it's coming rapidly. And the roles, even the expertise that you need in an organization almost changes overnight these days. It's, it's a very good question. I mean, if I'm working for an organization and on the assumption that they've engaged me mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, to be uh, more open, um, I, I guess the starting point is like, okay, um, you know, where are they now? I like to know where they are right now. And, and if I've been engaged uh, by anybody because they want to be more open, uh, that's an individual team or organization, it's, you know, somebody has made the assumption that they're not. I don't right. know if they are or not, but mm. somebody has. So what does that look like? And, and what does openness look like to them anyway? Because they are where they are and they want to be where they want to be. Now, my idea of what openness is, <laughs> mm-hmm. is maybe different to what they are envisioning. So, you right. know, these are good starting points. Where are they now and where are they expecting to go to? And, and how does that, you know, I, I can resonate around that. Uh, mm-hmm. to see is it actually going, you know, I- I- in a right direction. Mm-hmm. And then we'll work out the steps to get from wherever they are to wherever they need to be. Yeah. And then it's also looking at, you know, are you, because here's another thing too, is is companies change over time. It's a, you can be a highly innovat- innovative company, come up mm-hmm. with something great. I mean, look, BlackBerry is a classic example, obviously, yeah. come up with something uh, fantastic. But if you don't maintain that level of innovation, if you don't maintain that level of of uh, of research, of trying new things, if you get comfortable, then you go the way of the BlackBerry, right? Uh, mm. And we've seen plenty of examples of that. So just because you start off as an innovative company doesn't mean you continue to be one. You can lose that too. You can become just as, as uh, routine as anyone else. 
Uh, absolutely. I totally agree with you there. I mean, you know, just because you had a, a wonderful innovation and, and, it, and it put you to number one or whatever it's done, um, doesn't mean you can come up with it again. Um, I, I believe in innovation, um, it, it is a mindset. It, it's a way of uh, uh, looking at things. And given that the pace of change that we have today um, I believe it's a really important mindset to embrace. Now, if we don't like the word innovation and some people don't mm -hmm. like that word or struggle with that word, I just say just remain curious. Yes. You know, question things, tinker, tinker, you know, try stuff. Like, mm -hmm. take this generative AI. I mean, it's been out now for what, two years since oh, yeah. Chat GPT hit the planet. Mm -hmm. um, and for many, many months, even six months, even a year, even longer, there's still some people who hasn't who haven't made a move on it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there are others who just just went out there and started tinkering and did stuff, and some of it worked, and some of it was a complete and utter waste of time. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, it's a bit like Edison. You know, he's found ten thousand ways of the, the yeah. ways that the light bulb doesn't work, and he found the one way that did. Um, it, it's just a matter of trying and trying and trying. Yeah, um, I love that you use the word curious, though, because I think that's uh, I, I think that's something that's so incredibly important and something that I feel like we're losing in a little ways because we've gotten uh, you know we've got these things right, these stupid mm. things who are yeah. they're constantly feeding us nonsense, right? And so we think that we're learning, we think that we're aware, but we're not. We're just getting all these vignettes coming at us. Um, but real curiosity, I mean, really spending time like considering things, contemplating things, looking at maybe generative AI and thinking about, okay, how could this impact my organization? How could this impact this and that? Mm. I think the curiosity piece is so key, but I find that it's it's a lost art in many people because they've gotten so distracted. Mm. There are <clears throat> an awful lot of distractions, yeah. I mean, as you said, <laughs> these devices yeah. um they're, they're a they're a blessing and a curse they're a narcissist um, they're narcissists they want yeah, attention, they, they they want attention all the time they can be a narcissistic if you're if you're using them in a certain way mm -hmm. but even if you are using them for research take say using uh, generative ai or using search engines to search real search uh, you know search stuff up Mm -hmm. um, the fact is, is that you can end up going down a rabbit hole. Hey, this was interesting. Before you yeah. know it, like, oh, the whole day has gone. And all yeah. right, you didn't actually mean to go down that rabbit hole because you were researching something else. And 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 then the the, distra the super distraction comes in is that yeah, these these um, <laughs> on the internet and whatever browser, whatever you're using, they're super smart and they're tracking everything you do. Right. And, you get hit with some pop-up adverts and all sorts of stuff. So if you haven't got the right ad blockers and stuff like that on, is yeah, it's constant disruption. It's very, 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 very hard to focus. Yeah. Um, and, on, and on that thing of, of, of focus, I mean, I think that's the other part too, is because we're talking about, you know, embracing change, uh, but you also need to place your bets too, right? And figure out where you should focus and be very clearly focused and then push the other things aside. And it always feels again, as humans, I, we're very bad at that, right? We, we, we making focus means you have to make choices, right? And we hate mm -hmm. making choices because if you choose one thing by default, you unchoose other things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, but when it comes to focus on what you should be working on, it's really the lens at which you're making that decision. Mm -hmm. Should you be doing this or should you be doing that? Um, and uh, it's to me, it's all about alignment. Mm -hmm. You know, so for an organization, the organization has a purpose. They usually have an annual plan. <laughs> um, you know, they might be using OKRs or whatever. You know, a goal setting and metric regime that they have, and it's supposed to cascade all the way down mm -hmm. the organization right. to little old me. Yep. Okay. Um, and I have lenses, you know, corporate lenses to use to decide, should I do this or should I do that? Uh, so that's one of them, you know, on targets and things. The other one might be obviously the, uh, the values of the organization as well. Um, but it also comes to the personal side as well yep. as individuals. What is our purpose? What is our life purpose? What are our goals, our life goals or our annual goals? 
Um, what are our core values? Um, and knowing those, then when, again, similarly confronted with the should I do this or should I do that, we have to look at it through a personal lens and we have to look at it through the corporate lens as well. Mm-hmm. And as long as we have alignment in all of it, then I know I should do A because it is alignment uh, with my own core values, goals, and life purpose. And it happens to be in alignment with the company's core values uh, and purpose and this year's targets and my targets. Mm-hmm. And this other thing isn't or isn't as much if I can only do one of them, even if they're both going in the right direction. Yeah, and, and I would say, uh, Rick, I if you'd agree that a lot of people have never really done that exercise mm. even to ask themselves, like, what, what are my core values? You know, what is my purpose? What am I really doing it? I mean, most people say, oh, it's a job, mm. pays the bills, whatever. You know, you go, mm. is, but that's not enough. You, you need something. You need something more. And I don't. And again, I think it's an, unfortunate. It's an exercise people either don't go through or leave too late to go through. Is mm. like figuring out what what are my core values? What do I want? What is my purpose? And and uh, why am I doing what I'm doing? Because what do you have to carry yourself through the hard times if you don't have purpose and meaning? Absolutely, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, however, I I'd have to say that <clears throat> since the pandemic or because of the the COVID pandemic uh, and all the incredible disruption that it did, mm. you know, people, you know. Anything from entire industries, yep. uh, companies, you know, going out of business uh, meant that people got, you know, retrenched, lost their jobs, had to pivot into something else, um, or you know, they had to work from home. Um, and when when people have come back, um, things are different um, because we've all changed. Uh, we might have, I think. An awful lot of people have liked maybe the freedom of not having to go into the office. Yeah, um, an awful lot of people have done that. Um, so that's one aspect. Another aspect is you've had a year or two to reflect on what work really means. Yep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and what you what you want. And um, I believe that the great resignation, the great reshuffle, the great whatever people want to call it is people voting with their feet. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now, it's not necessarily they're fed up with their organization, which could be a large mm. element, but it, it could also be that yeah, there's nothing wrong with the company that they work with, but now that they've had time to think about it, uh, it's not really what they want. And mm. the grass is greener somewhere else until they find out it isn't. It isn't, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. And going back to this core values, life purpose, and all of that, if you don't have a purpose, if you don't have those core values, then you could be just blindly going from you know one green field that's greener yeah. than the other yeah. and just keep moving around, and you're still unhappy. Yeah. You're still unhappy. And this is, to me, the great sadness, the great, um, yeah. the great opportunity. Yeah, I know. And I was going to say to people, um, you know, Ireland is really, really green. It's probably greener mm. than anywhere else, but that's because it rains a lot. So when you see those distant <laughs> fields that look greener than the one you're in, just consider the fact that it probably rains a lot over there. <laughs> so yeah. it may it has a downside too. Uh, but I mm. but I agree with you, and I think that's why it's so incredibly important for people to take some time out and go through that exercise, and be in their own heads for a little bit, and and put aside the distractions and really ask what because, like you said. I may work for a company, I may love the company, but I may have gotten used to during COVID maybe like structuring my life a little differently and it worked for me and I found I was more productive and therefore I'm looking for some flexibility from the organization and if I don't get that, then you're right, I'm voting with my feet. I mean, I feel Mm -hmm. like, and probably when people were at home, a lot of people realized, do I actually like where I live? Am I just here (laughs) because I... I located myself close to work or within a a commute of work. But now when I look around, when that's removed from my day, I don't really care for where I live for expensive. It's, you know, there's not a lot going on. And therefore now I'm going to find somewhere where I want to live and I'll find a job that, you know, a remote job that accommodates me. And I think that's where people have flipped the script a little bit. Now it's, 
I'm going to decide where I'm going to locate myself, where I'm going to live, what kind of lifestyle I want, then I'll go find the job. I totally agree. There's more, for more and more people, there's a conscious decision. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, since a lot of this didn't apply pre-pandemic because yeah. maybe we were brainwashed into, yeah, you get up, you commute, you go to the office, you sit in your cube and you jump on that little hamster wheel. Yep. Um, you know, gazillions of people did that. Uh, but the pandemic threw away the cube, threw away the hamster wheel, and in a lot of places, even threw away the office. Yeah. <laughs> in some yeah, cases, yeah. you would drop as well. I mean, I mean, it's you've never had to think about this, and, and now we can make a conscious decision. So going back to the um, having a purpose and core values, another way of looking at it is those people who are clear in their purpose, those people who are clear in their core values, they can make better decisions when making these new decisions of where they want to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, should I stay? Should I go? And if I'm going to go, exactly where I am going to go. Mm -hmm. um, uh, another way around the, the, the core values to, for those of people who don't have them or haven't really thought about them is, it, you know, uh, well, I'm, I'm a Brit, as you said, <laughs> uh, we like moaning about things and complaining about things. The weather is one of them. Uh, the traffic and the commute is another. Uh, but, um, you know, when we have a moan and groan about of our job, some, you know, something's out of whack, all right? And in a lot of cases, it's because one of our boundaries to our values has been crossed. Right. Okay? Um, now, if we uh, keep getting sort of wound up and we, we don't know what our core values are, we may not even be aware that it's the same boundary being crossed. Right, right, <laughs> right. Okay. And so if we actually know this is my core value and this is a real hard boundary and it's just going to be no, I'm just going to say no next time. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get wound up that. I'm just going to say no because that is a hard boundary. Yeah. Um, and I think and the other again, thing, is, I think the other thing as you get older too is like you know sometimes people think, oh, here's my li you're gonna put my list of core values. Well, at the end of the day, you know you're probably going to get them down to a couple of really solid ones that you really mm. care about, rather than you know when we're younger we probably have a ton of them, but as you get older you realize there are some fundamentals. And I think you're right. It's when you it's when you compromise on on a fundamental uh, that's when life gets very out of whack. Mm. No, I, you know, I, uh, I, I agree with you. And um, I'll pick up on your point that maybe when we're younger, um, we have a lot of, uh, we have more core values. Um, I'm not sure if that if that's the case, because uh, I can't remember back <laughs> that far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think maybe, well, yeah, I can't, yeah, I can't maybe. remember stuff anymore. Yeah, uh, no, but, I know. Um, the, the, the important thing is, is um, uh, there are exercises, there are techniques obviously, that we can, we can follow to whittle down however many core value, values you have to identify the core ones and then to really identify the most important. And it will usually come down to a handful at most, but usually the top two, top yeah. three. Absolutely. Well, listen, uh, Rick, this has been uh, fascinating. We're, we're bumping up against our time here. All of Rick's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm a Brit, obviously. <laughs> you spotted that. Um, I am an accountant by training. Yay, love accountants. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, as I mentioned early on, I, I've done lots of other things. You know, I'm into technology. I actually run a technology company. Uh, and we, we implement uh, financial ERP all around the world. Um, the, I'm also heavily into people, uh, as in um, testing of people, psychometric testing of people, because I'm a numbers person, being an accountant, mm, right. and I need a, some scientific way of interpreting people because I didn't really understand them for a long while because <laughs> I'm a numbers person, not a people yeah. person. Um, I've since morphed into coaching, um, mm. So I'm a chief master coach, and so I coach individuals, teams, companies, but I prefer individuals. Uh, with a focus, my current focus is I help people get unstuck. Right. You know, if people are stuck for whatever reason they're stuck, I'll get them unstuck. 
So if you're going around in circles and you're trying to get from A to B and you're still at A, I can help with that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. Um, because let's face it, if you if you stop for a moment, you you'll know if you're stuck. You know if you're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, listen, uh, thanks again, Rick. Uh, I would encourage you to go, our audience, go check out Rick's work. Uh, thank you, Rick. Thank you for watching, listening, and I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.